Hey y'all, I'm Paula Dean, and today we're going back to the time when poodle skirts, hula hoops, and TV dinners were all the rage. I'm gonna give you a taste of those good old times again. First, we're headed to my hometown of Albany, Georgia to get the twist on some peppermint sticks. And then it's back to my kitchen where we're making Aunt Peggy's meatloaf. And then it's okra and tomatoes and cottage potatoes that are just the perfect sidecar for this meal. And finally, it's peppermint cream pie and peppermint bark, a dessert that's so refreshing and light, you'll feel like dancing all night. So open up the snack tables and invite a few friends over. We're gonna be taking a trip down Comfort Food Lane. y'all. Today, I'm going to take y'all back to my past. I'm going to take you to visit Bob's Candy Company, where the McCormick family is king of peppermint. Y'all come along with me, and we're going to do the peppermint twist. <laughs> Greg, I don't think I've ever seen so many candy canes in all my life in one spot. Well, you know, Paula, we make a billion candy canes. That's with a B per year. Paula, I want you to meet my two sisters that work in the business with me. This is Mary Helen. Hey, Dyson. Mary Helen, good to see you. Hello, Hello. I'm Julie Cross. Hey, Julie, Welcome. nice to Welcome. see Welcome you. Welcome to Bob's Candies. I can't hardly wait to get my hands in some well, of Let's get you some gloves and I'm get ready. going. Yeah. Do I need my safety glasses back here? Most Welcome definitely. <laughs> now, those are, those would be some style and safety glasses. <laughs> what is this, Greg? That looks delicious. Oh, now, Paula, that is the candy, the sugar and the corn syrup that we've taken off the cooling table. Uh -huh and we put it onto the pulling machine. And just the air going inside the candy turns it that satiny that white color. It. And that's where we put the peppermint flavor in. Okay, Paula, now he's taken the, the white, it's called the pin slab. And if you look, it's got little lines on there that's gonna show him where to put the pin stripes on there. All right, now just stretch it and put it where? Right there? What? What? You make it look so easy, Charlie. Well, I've been doing it for years. Look, I got, I'm gonna have a crooked cane. Right about the center. Right. In the center, is that the center? Okay. What is that weigh? That weighs about 100 pounds. Now this is called the batch roller, Paul, and that takes that big batch of candy and it's gonna narrow it down to a lot smaller size uh -huh. where it goes through those rollers that give you this exact size candy cane that now you want. Now how long will it take? That will, take, that a, that will take about 20 minutes. Well now y'all have shown me everything, Julie, but how do you, how do you get the handle in that candy cane? Well, that's a secret that um, Bob's Candies is going to have to keep. Let's just suffice it to say it's not done by elves. Paula, we thank you for coming, and we want you to take this back to your kitchen and do oh, great things. Oh, thank you, there. thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, McCormick's, for a wonderful time in your candy shop. Y'all mean so much to Albini. And I'm going to put these to good use. Great. Good. good to Thanks. see you. Bye. Bye. y'all had fun in my birthplace in Albany, Georgia at Bob's Candy Company. It was so much fun. Really took me back to the 60s. I got some peppermint and I'm going to put it to the side because we're going to move right on to our entree, which is a wonderful 50s and 60s dish, an old-fashioned meatloaf. Just like my mother and my Aunt Peggy and my grandmother used to make. Before we get started, I think I'm going to get rid of these fun glasses. We're going to start with the ground beef. A good ground beef, maybe an 80-20, something like that. All right, we're going to kind of break it down just a little bit. And we're going to add a teaspoon and about a quarter of salt and a deepened fourth of a teaspoon of the pepper. All right, now I've got like a half of a large onion and a diced bell pepper. And we're just going to mix that in there with that. Oops. I forgot to take my jewelry off. Did I show y'all my engagement ring that Michael gave me? I don't want that meatloaf all in those rings. All right, so we're just gonna mash that bell pepper and onions up into the hamburger meat. Kind of get that incorporated along with that salt and pepper. We're gonna take one egg, 
and give it just a few beats. Just a little bit. And then we're gonna add a fourth of a cup of oatmeal. And this just gives your meatloaf a real light and fluffiness to it. And then we're gonna take a can of just diced tomatoes and their juice. Squish, squish. So you can see I'm starting to try to work that into kind of a loaf shape right now. I'm just gonna take that out and put it into our dish. And the thing I like about my Aunt Peggy's meatloaf is she doesn't top it with just ketchup. She takes a fourth of a cup of ketchup and about a tablespoon of mustard, a couple of tablespoons of brown sugar, and just mixes those together. And the brown sugar is so good in there. You know, it just kind of gives that meatloaf just a little sweetness on the outside. And we're just gonna brush that on our meat. Doesn't that look yummy? So this one's ready to go in the oven, and we're gonna put it in a 350 preheated oven, and we're gonna let it cook for about 45 minutes to an hour. Before we know it, we're gonna have a wonderful aroma coming from the oven. But while we're waiting on that to cook, I wanna show you another favorite from the 50s and 60s, and that's okra and tomatoes. Now, I've started with some chopped up bacon, and I'm gonna add to the bacon one chopped onion, and you see how much garlic, a good bit. So we're gonna dump all that in. So we're gonna saute until it's kinda transparent. And I'm gonna put in a large can of diced tomatoes. Now, if it's tomato season, by all means use fresh. All right, now we're gonna add a tablespoon of chicken base. And we're gonna use about a tablespoon of sugar to just give it a little hint of sweetness. Now, we're gonna let this cook for about 20 minutes. In fact, I already have some tomatoes right here that have been cooking. So we're just gonna throw our okra over in here. And I'm probably using two cups of okra. Look at the colors, aren't they pretty? So, we're just gonna put the lid on that and let that cook until the okra's done. Probably about 10 or 15 minutes. And let's see what we've got right here. And see how they've lightened out in color. So that lets us know that they're done. So, that really completes that dish. That's how simple it is. Let's check that oven and see how the other meatloaf that I've got in the other oven's doing. Oh, it looks so good. Look at that meatloaf. Doesn't that look good? Well, I can smell those bell peppers. I'm gonna just try one of those little end pieces. Come over here and get me some of that okra and tomatoes. Doesn't it look just yummy? Mm. It's so hot. So good. Takes me back to my Aunt Peggy's table. When we come back, we're gonna be doing the peppermint twist in a peppermint pie. Hi, y'all caught me just gathering everything up to, to make our peppermint pie. This is gonna be a perfect ending to our meal. We're gonna start with heavy cream and a cup of crushed peppermint. And I'm gonna do this the old fashioned way. Okay, that looks to be about a cup. I'm gonna mix my gelatin with a little bit of water and let that dissolve for a second. And we're gonna pour our peppermint into our cream. 
and we're gonna stir this until our milk gets totally incorporated. We're gonna add our gelatin, and this is gonna act as our thickening agent for our pie. And you don't wanna walk away from your pan on this one. It shouldn't take too long for that candy to melt. I actually have some ready right here. We'll just switch eyes and let it melt. And you'll find that when you melt your peppermint, that it turns a real pretty caramel color. Now our candy and our cream has cooled off nicely. We're gonna fold it into whipped cream that's been whipped to a nice peak. So I'm just gonna make sure I get all the goodie out of this sauce pot. Now you wanna be careful when folding in your melted candy because you don't wanna break down your whipping cream. We've got that mixed in, so all we're gonna do is pile this into a store-bought chocolate cracker crumb crust. And if you want to, you can make your own out of Oreo cookies, they're so good. We're just gonna pile this in and stick this in the refrigerator until it's set. And you see how when it's mixed with the whipping cream, it almost has a little light pinkish cast to it. Okay, so we're just gonna stick this in the fridge and let it set, which it won't take long because it's got that gelatin in it. And while that's setting up, I'm gonna show you how to make the easiest peppermint pine bark. So simple. For this one now, I've chosen some of the just hard candy canes. And you can use any kind of peppermint you want for this, but we're gonna take, oh, about that many, and we're gonna just take this and break them up. And I'm not gonna break these up very fine because I like to really crunch into the peppermint. Now I've got a couple of pounds of good white chocolate melting over the heat. Doesn't that look delicious? See how that's just smoothing right on out with that little bit of flame going to it. And I'm gonna put about maybe a half a teaspoon of peppermint flavoring. But we're gonna have the peppermint from the candy and the peppermint from the flavorings. That white chocolate was yummy though. All right, and all we're gonna do, we don't wanna melt our peppermint, so we're not gonna stir it in until we're totally done with the heat. And I've got just an ordinary cookie sheet lined with a parchment paper, and I'm just gonna fold that candy into that chocolate, and then we're just gonna spread it onto our pan now you can make it as thick with the candy as you like. I'm just gonna spread that out and you can just hold on to your piece of paper so it won't slide away with you. Isn't that pretty the way you can see the pieces of candy? All we're gonna do is chill that. We're gonna stick it in the refrigerator. And I happen to have some already cooling in here. That's ready to break out, and I've got a pie ready, and I've even got some more whipping cream. So see how simple that was, and you have a great candy, and it just lifted right off. Now all you have to do is just break this into any shape you want, and the, as big a piece as you want. This is a fun little thing to have the children do. So, I Peppermint bark is ready. Now, I like my pies like I do my hairdo real high. So I'm gonna bring this one up a little bit by adding whipped cream to it. Now, I'm using heavy cream that's been sweetened with a little sugar, and I'm just gonna pile that nice and high on it. Almost looks like meringue, doesn't it? Now, to finish our pie off, I have some crushed peppermint candies, and I'm just gonna give it a Little sprinkle. Doesn't that look delicious? So simple and easy. You'll want to work your crust away from your container. I'm gonna put me just a few sprinkles on my plate. Oh, doesn't that look good? And I think I ought to chase that piece of pie with some peppermint bark, don't y'all? Oh gosh, it looks delicious. The 
See why I put those crumbs on that plate? So I could take my fork and go around and get me a few extra. So the crunch, so delicious. This is hard to beat, but coming up next, we're gonna do some old timey cottage potatoes. So I'll see y'all in a few minutes. No retro meal would be complete without a potato. So we're fixing to make an old timey dish, cottage potatoes, but I'm gonna show you a new twist to them. Now we're gonna use three large bacon potatoes. These are more like a medium. So I'm probably gonna use about five of these. So all we're gonna do is slice them. And you don't have to be perfect because we're actually gonna wind up mashing these up but you want them close in size so they'll all be done about the same time. All right, now all we're gonna do is cover those with water and I'm gonna throw a little salt in the pot with them and just boil those until they're tender. Those look just delicious. We're gonna add a little salt to them and I'm using a nice kosher on these and a little black pepper. All right, now the recipe calls for two tablespoons of butter. That looks like two tablespoons to me, doesn't it, do you? <laughs> you know, I never was real good at measuring. All right, so we're gonna take our masher, and you can see I'm using an old-timey masher instead of an electric mixer, because I don't want these real creamy. I still kinda want them in chunks. I just love a potato. I know y'all have heard me say it before. If you were gonna send me off to an island and say, Paula, you can only have one food, I would choose the tater. And that's about how I like them. Now we're gonna take uh, just ordinary cottage cheese and stir into those. Those look good just like that, don't they? Let me see, I've got some onions sitting around here to throw in that. Let me find my onion, here it is. We're gonna just toss in some onion and those will still be kind of crunchy and good. I'm just gonna pile them into the casserole dish. I'm gonna spray it so they won't stick too, too badly on us. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually even jazz this up with some sour cream with a little mayonnaise or milk. It'd be delicious on it. But I'm gonna do this just like the recipe calls for in my cookbook. I'm gonna mash those down in there. And if you liked it hot, you can even add some jalapeno. We're just gonna sprinkle this with paprika and the paprika will give it a nice brown look. And why don't we just for good measure <laughs> take the rest of our butter. That two tablespoons doesn't need to be sitting there by itself. So we'll just dot the top of this with a little bit more butter. And we're gonna stick this in a 350 degree preheated oven and we're gonna bake it for about 30 or 35 minutes. And I have one over here that should be ready. And it is, look how good it looks. It's sizzling. Here it's sizzling. So good, y'all. Coming up next, some old-timey tips for today's great foods. You know, some folks just don't like a greasy meatloaf. Well, let me tell you how to solve that problem. You just line your baking dish with whatever kind of loaf bread you've got in the house and it soaks up all your grease and you just take your spatula and lift your meatloaf out onto your platter. Just that simple. And on the okra, if you can't find fresh okra, it's not a problem. 
because the fresh frozen okra is so very good. You can buy it in whole pods or you can buy it already cut up, whatever your dish calls for. Hope these tips will help you. I hope y'all have had fun with me today going back into the past with some fun old meals from the 50s and 60s. I hope you'll love my Aunt Peggy's meatloaf and the cottage potatoes and Bob's peppermint candy pie and the peppermint bark. And of course, my okra and tomatoes. Hope you have a great time at your own party. In the meantime, America, I wish you best dishes from my kitchen to yours.